The future of the Apple Vision Pro is already hiding in plain sight, but no one seems to notice. Carefully watch this clip of Apple announcing a very important feature for the Apple Watch just a few months before the launch of the Apple Vision Pro. Seems quite familiar, right? Yeah, that is definitely no coincidence. Same goes for the recent USB-C AirPods Pro, which are conveniently the only headphones that allow spatial lossless audio with the Vision Pro, as I Justine explained. Some of the new USB-C AirPods, because one of the new things with the new AirPods is you can actually listen to spatial audio with the Apple Vision Pro. Now, you can only do that with the new USB-C version. So remember these features very carefully because we will need and use them later in this video. If you still don't get it, these features are both hints at what the future iterations of the Vision Pro will look like. Either the Vision Air or a renewed smaller Vision Pro 2, that is. I believe they're taking the exact same approach with the Vision Pro as with the iPhone. Innovation through simplicity. Instead of focusing on delivering fancy new features for the devices, Apple simplifies them by removing stuff we don't need or by integrating features that are enhanced through the use of other Apple products. Think of how Apple removed the home button with Touch ID and replaced it with the larger screen and Face ID on the iPhone 10, Or how Apple introduced the notch with Dynamic Island on the iPhone 14 Pro. Or the perfect example is of course the one of Apple removing the headphone jack and introducing the AirPods as a complementary accessory. How convenient was that? Never forget. Alright, but that's the iPhone. Does that really have to do anything with the Vision Pro? Was the question I asked myself. How could Apple turn the currently ginormous Vision Pro headset into a semi-normal set of glasses? What could they remove or simplify? Let's try to figure that out together. And you might be thinking, all right, cool story, bro. But where is your Vision Pro? My friend, I'm in Europe. We did not get the Vision Pro. So what's the next best thing? Obsess over it and watch tens of YouTube videos and share my ideas. Let's get started. Currently, the Vision Pro has eight cameras, including two for your side view and two downwards cameras that track your hand movement. Hand movement, you said? Uh-huh. Remember the latest Apple Watch feature I showed in the intro? I am pretty sure that feature got introduced so the Apple Watch can be the main hand tracking device for the next generation of Vision. And Engadget pretty much confirms this by explaining all sensors the Apple Watch uses to track your hand movement. The Apple is using a combination of the accelerometer, the gyroscope, and the optical heart rate sensor to detect blood flow anomalies and movements and take all of that data and see if you've been pinching. Obviously, Apple won't straight up ask for your data on hand movement, so instead, they gather it through a new fancy feature. Now that does cause one issue, which is that it's only able to track one hand, the one wearing the watch. But I think that won't be too hard for Apple to solve. They could, theoretically speaking, very possibly introduce a low ticket health tracker without a screen that directly competes with the Whoop. The Whoop 4.0 is pretty much an Apple Watch without a screen that tracks your activity, sleep, heart rate, and more. A device like the Whoop which is definitely way cheaper to make since it lacks a screen, would therefore also be perfect for tracking hand movement paired with the Vision headset. At the same time, this also solves the issue that some users were having where tracking simply won't even work in low light environments. Also, I did test it um, using it in the dark more, and when it's too dark, it will tell you where it may not be able to see your hand as well. There are IR illuminators here on the bottom that you can still use. I've noticed that in low light, not only does the hand tracking kind of stop working and get way less accurate, but the eye tracking degrades a lot too. So that leaves us with six cameras. And I think to simplify these, Apple will take a page out of Meta's playbook in terms of camera placement. Apple is definitely doubling down on spatial video, so my bet is that they will leave two main cameras placed on the sides, just like the Meta Ray-Ban glasses. 
These cameras will still allow users to capture spatial video and photos, but will sacrifice hand tracking. In turn, it does streamline the device a lot. And the main sensor... Yeah, I don't think Apple would remove LiDAR, so that could very well fit into the center of the frame. Okay, cameras, done. Now, let's take another look at that gigantic futuristic headband. How would Apple simplify this? They have two speakers which apparently deliver very strong spatial audio. Hmm. What other device delivers strong spatial audio? Mm-hmm. That USB-C AirPods Pro which conveniently got upgraded to be used as a perfect match with the Vision Pro. Now that we already removed six cameras from the front and streamlined the design even more, it only makes sense to replace the headband with regular stems, right? Apple will just remove the speakers and allow users to complement the headset with the AirPods they most likely already have in possession. Now that the headband's gone, what about the internal sensors? What will happen to optic ID and eye tracking? To be fair, I think that modern technology in its current state would not allow Apple to have those sensors in a smaller frame like normal glasses. If Apple decided to go Air with the next gen, these features will very likely be removed. A viable solution for Apple, in my opinion, is to double down on head tracking and combine this with allowing Apple Watch movement to function as a cursor. And for authentication, Apple isn't shy of reintroducing older features to newer devices. Just like the latest iPad mini has Touch ID instead of Face ID, the next-gen Vision headset could have Touch ID authentication on the side of the stem. Easy. But I know what you're thinking. This still leaves us with two gigantic lenses which act as screens and of course the very famous pass-through screen. And instead of me speculating on it, let's take a look at how another company has solved this. Meet Xreal. So these are their new Xreal Air 2 glasses. They're augmented reality glasses. So they have a Sony micro OLED display right here, which has very accurate colors and has 1080p resolution in both eyes. It'll basically show you a huge virtual 330 inch screen right in front of your face. So basically it's like having your own personal cinema in your pocket. Another thing that these air glasses allow you to do is to work while sitting very lean back. In this position, my head is facing up almost towards the ceiling. And of course, it's hard to mount a monitor at that location. But with these glasses, I can just type away while basically laying down. One of my absolute favorite features from Vitor was their electrochromic film. This allowed the glasses to dim the surrounding area of the lens, making the display easier to see in bright light. The Air 2 Pros have adopted this function. I honestly didn't even know glasses could dim like that. And you might still think, nah. Pass-through is one of the most iconic features of the Apple Vision Pro. There's no way they would get rid of that, right? I would agree, but Vision Pro users all report that pass-through isn't nearly as good as it has been advertised to be. You should see my eyes. Maybe. <laughs> and that that's the thing. It barely shows up. <laughs> you can barely see my eyes when I'm wearing the headset. Because of this, I think Apple probably won't double down on it and instead will go for see-through glasses with displays similar to Xreal. And I should also add that the naming scheme of their products is quite familiar. I personally wouldn't be surprised if Apple ends up acquiring this company for their tech, but who knows. On top of that, Samsung, who's one of the manufacturers for Apple's displays, recently announced a see-through OLED display. Do what you want with that info. Anyway, it turns out that there are also gigantic coolers between the display and lenses. So where do these go? Well, straight to the bin, according to Apple. Remember when they announced the MacBook Air with the M1 chip? That was also the first Apple laptop which came without fans. Are you beginning to understand why Apple's focus on their silicon chips isn't always to make it more powerful, but instead to make it more efficient? Especially products like the next-gen Vision headset need a smaller, more efficient chipset so they can again innovate through simplicity. So far, we've removed six out of eight cameras, introduced hand tracking with Apple Watch, 
and replaced the headband and speakers with regular stems and AirPods Pro. Then we replaced Optic ID with Touch ID and removed the inner eye tracking sensors to double down on head tracking while using the Apple Watch as a cursor. Even pass-through and the vision displays got replaced by transparent screens similar to the X-Real. So I think we're getting pretty close to the final product. But we are not done yet. We still have two ginormous buttons on the top of the headset. So for this one, take a quick step back. Where did we first see these buttons? On the Apple Watch, of course. So I'm once again speculating just a little bit, but let's say Apple introduces a VR mode to the Apple Watch. Activating this could theoretically mean that the buttons on the watch will function as a replacement for the buttons on your Vision headset. That said, I think with all this considered, we are pretty close to an Apple Vision headset that looks more like a pair of glasses than a massive ski helmet we currently have. If Tim Cook happens to be watching, either you're welcome for simplifying the headset for you, or my apologies for spoiling what the next generation of the Vision Pro will look like. Uh, hello? Cool breakdown, Jason. But how about the ginormous battery pack we still have to carry? Um, I don't know. I don't actually work for Apple. Fair enough. Let the viewers figure that out in the comments. Uh, well, you heard him. Help us solve the battery pack problem, please. Anything else? Since you don't work for Apple, shall we open up the pair ecosystem? I think it's time. Yeah, let's do it. See you soon. Don't make me come for you. Subscribe right now.